you are setting up or establishing situations which prompt communication from their side and it is desirable next point please the teacher reminds the students that one of them is playing the role of the boss and that they should remember this when speaking to her okay this is about appropriacy social linguistic competence that means how you talk to your boss i mean the way you talk to your friend you do not talk to your uh, your boss that way you know you you change your words you change your attitude and even expressions for example it's very simple that when you are talking to your friend you say hi buddy how's life and when you are talking to your boss you'll say hello sir hello madam how is everything are you fine are you all right you change your style you change your intonation pitch everything all right even sometimes you 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 use uh, what do we say soft vocal quality you sound very soft when you're talking to your superiors so i mean they are studying different situations and it is situations which give meanings to words words do not have meanings actually for example let's say go go means to move for example i can say i'm going to gandhinagar okay fine but if i say uh, let's say for example uh, he's gone that means he's dead so now the word actually the meaning of the word changes here see and that is what is really important i mean students should learn the operational value of the word how the word operates in this context how the word behaves in this context because words change their meanings you know when they have different companies so remember that words have no meaning situations give meanings to these words so that is what students are learning next point the teacher moves from group to group offering advice and answering questions the teacher actually the person who practices communicative language teaching is a facilitator that means he helps students to communicate he sets up he establishes situations where the students can communicate or well they feel tempted to communicate that is really important actually he is not a teacher he is a friend he is a facilitator at the same time he has to move from group to group because sometimes students might have questions you know and always always entertain queries and inquiries i mean attend to their inquiries for example some students they might ask sir how to say this thing in english and if they are asking this thing that means they are actually feeling that they need certain expressions to communicate and they don't know how to say this thing in english and at the same time they have learned that this is not the way to say it in english i mean you know perhaps sometimes they come to know that translation is not the right method certain things cannot be translated and that is what is needed actually when you are you know uh, uh, using this approach communicative approach so move from group to group at the same time when you are talking to them you are an advisor you have to monitor their actions and that is needed i mean give advice and see if they are comfortable with the tasks you have given them all right let's have a look at the next slide please that's the 14th one i mean the students suggest alternative forms they would use to state a view to a colleague this is really important again this is about social linguistic competence because students might give alternative forms they might use different forms to say one thing as i said you know for example when you offer something to your friend for example you say uh, would you like to have something would you like to have a cup of coffee or let's have a cup of coffee or you can say fancy a cup of coffee how about having a cup of coffee these are different forms different expressions to offer something but when you are talking to your friend you use a different form in the sense that you sound very informal when you are talking to your boss when you are talking to your principal again the forms you choose are completely different so the situation helps you to uh, choose a correct form or let's say an appropriate form that is more important right so how to choose this appropriate form definitely the situation will help you and you know actually when students are uh, 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 giving you alternative forms uh, that means they have already learned that the demand of the situation is different from the demand of the situation they have been in for example for example they must have talked to their parents about all these things they must have had a uh, 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 you know what we say a kind of experience with some people uh, where they use certain expressions but now they feel that this expression won't work here that means they have realized that uh, there is a different requirement here there is a different need i mean they need certain expressions which will help them to uh, communicate effectively so let them come out or come up with different alternative forms and uh, let them suggest these forms if possible and entertain them that means help them to come up with new forms right 
next point is after the role play is finished the students elicit relevant vocabulary all right it is the context that helps you to learn vocabulary it is the context that helps you to learn linguistic structures you know for example let's say may i'm going to give this example later on as well but right now this example will make sense in the sense you know i mean it is very applicable here for example the word may now we use it when we predict for example we say it may rain or when we seek permission may i come in but when they have you know uh, uh role played when they have performed this task you know sometimes they say that okay can is better or is appropriate here because it was more informal and can is used to seek permission but it is used when you want to sound very informal for example i can say can i come in now there's a difference between may i come in and can i come in can i come in i'm sorry uh, may i come in met that means i'm really seeking your permission and when i say can i come in that means i don't see any problem if i get inside what do you say it's something like that it is more informal all right next point is for their homework the students are to listen to a debate on television isn't this interesting i mean students actually love watching tv they love listening to a, a debate on television and that's very good i mean because uh, if you ask them to write long essays you know i don't say it's wrong because even I mean, it is preferred but when they watch uh, television or when they listen to uh, debates on television they they are learning the language which people generally use how they talk how they argue how they discuss how they agree how they disagree and how they disagree politely that is more important because generally the students are told that if they don't agree they have to say i don't agree or i disagree which is really very rude you might sound rude when you say i don't agree for example you have to say uh, excuse me sir i have a question uh, I, I i understand what you say but so there are different ways to disagree politely and politeness does matter politeness principle for example you know that if you want to be a successful communicator you must talk politely and politeness does matter but how to express that politeness in the language that is not yours that means the target language so such things will happen when you listen to debates and online talks on television most probably when you listen to experts who use the language appropriately and accurately so somehow this this homework this assignment is very useful and students definitely enjoy this kind of exercise next please now these are some of the questions which i'm going to answer the first is what are the goals of teacher who use clt and uh, of course the first thing is to enable students to communicate in the target language of course we want them to use the target language effectively and let's say communicatively effectively because if they cannot that means learning has not taken place because that learning was of no use they can produce certain sentences they can uh, turn active sentences into passive sentences or they can do direct indirect they can use not only but also but when it comes to using all these forms in day to day conversations they can't they fail so what is happening here or what we are trying to say is the goals of teachers who use clt is to uh, enable the students to use the target language communicatively effectively at the same time students must come to know that there are different forms to perform one function and at the same time uh, they must also learn that certain functions can be performed with certain linguistic structures for example say when you're offering or when you're asking would you could you or if you are seeking somebody help somebody's help then you can say i wonder if you could that is something at advanced but people i mean students can easily you know learn this expressions if you are using clt communicative language teaching because they are already exposed to the language which is in use the next thing is what we are teaching them is to choose the most appropriate form that means how to choose the form which best expresses your intention what you say is the content and how you say is the attitude so both are very important when you are communicating it's not just enough to say i need a cup of coffee but how you want it how you need it that is more important that means uh, can i have a cup of coffee please would you please give me a cup of coffee i badly need a cup of coffee every time you are asking for a cup of coffee but your attitude is different and you have to communicate your attitude and that's uh, for that only you have to choose an appropriate form and that's what they learn when they are studying with the help of this method that is clt and 
Remember, communication is a process and knowledge of different linguistic structures is not enough. It's not sufficient. People, I mean students who have got a very good mastery over, let's say, grammar and linguistic structures are poor communicators. They cannot. And those who are not good at grammar or let's say they do not know much about different linguistic structures but they can be good communicators they have learned they have developed certain strategies which help them to communicate effectively and successfully and confidently which really matters then the second question what is the role of the teacher what is the role of the student it's very easy we have already discussed this point the teacher establishes situations and he is a facilitator he has to create situations which make students interested in uh, coming up with new forms of, uh, let's say, uh, 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 expressions. That means students must be interested in producing language. The more the language production is, the better it is. That means the more they produce, the better it is. That means you get a chance to study uh, their errors. At the same time, of course, errors are not highlighted, but as a a uh, responsible teacher you must study the errors which they commit when they are communicating and you can definitely help them later on uh, to uh, uh, what we can say eradicate these errors so the first duty is to establish uh, situations which prompt communication and that's the uh, most important thing that's the role of the teacher that you have to you know make your students communicate more and more at the same time you are a facilitator you are an advisor you offers uh, you offer advice to your students when they are in need when they they are committing errors or when they feel down or when they are feeling low at that time you can go to them and you can definitely help them with new expressions you can say okay these are the things and this is how you can express these things with the help of these expressions uh, for example when you are arguing with somebody you can say okay i get your point but uh, uh, why don't you think this way so somehow you are trying to be very informal at the same time you are trying to say that okay I get your point but I am sorry I do not agree with you but instead of saying I do not agree with you or being uh, sounding rude you are just uh, saying it politely so as an advisor you can definitely give suggestions like this and you have to monitor that activity see that they are not using the mother tongue of course you can allow them to use the mother tongue to some extent but judicious use of mother tongue is advisable that means if they continuously use the mother tongue then there is no point in doing these tasks and activities so monitor their activities and at the same time you are a co-communicator that means you have to communicate with the students that means participate if you got a chance to participate if you get a chance to uh, role play with your students why not take this opportunity that's good i mean even students feel motivated and they love actually playing with the teacher playing with their mentor and as a co-communicator it's your duty to uh, help your students when they are you know giving replies when they are answering your questions and uh, uh, the next point in the same question is what is the role of the students students are continuously engaged in different tasks or we can say they are conti continuously engaged in communication they how to communicate they how to interact because after all language exists for communication that means we uh, invented language for communication and that's the only purpose of communication we communicate we talk so students must participate in all the tasks you have given them see that no student says no and if that student says no approach the student with a loving attitude and talk to that student and if that student doesn't want to participate design a different task is possible but see that all the students participate in different tasks and produce language so the role of the students is to participate in different tasks and uh, produce language and use forms which are appropriate the next question is what are some characteristics of the teaching learning process clt actually all the communication activities have this communicative intent that means they have games role plays problem solving tasks activities that are truly communicative have three features in common remember that for example information gap then uh, choice and feedback information gap for example i know that it is tuesday today and you know it is tuesday today and i ask what day is it today and you say it is tuesday it is not communication you have to ask questions which elicit appropriate responses that means you have to make your students speak you have to make your students come up with 
new answers i mean new answers in the sense that these answers must not be ready made answers they have to think and they have to give answers in the sense that you are trying to link their thought with the language that means there must be a good connection between their brain and the tongue that means they think and they speak let them do that that is more important so always ask questions which elicit it il i'm sorry which elicit responses appropriate responses so information gap for example there can be a chain drill that means uh my neighbor that means the person who is uh, standing by me asks me a question and i reply for example he asked me how are you and i say i'm fine then i have to ask the same question to the person um uh, sitting uh, or standing beside me then this activity is completely useless because they are just saying hi i'm fine hi i'm fine or they say hello how are you i'm fine so it's of no use so you have to think of different questions which you can ask so that students uh, come up with innovative replies of course there might be some grammatical errors but certain errors are overlooked when they are trying to be creative because after all a good language user is always creative so even i mean let them be innovative let them be creative then comes choice of course there is a wide range of different forms there are there is a wide range of different expressions and ha they have to pick one which is appropriate i'm sorry which is appropriate for example uh, i have already given you some examples but still i would like to give one more let's say for example you want to offer something to your superior then you can say so why don't you sit down you're offering a chair but you can't you generally if you are not on i mean let's say if you are not very informal with him then you won't say hey sit down but if you are quite informal with your superior much depends on your relationship you know status then you can say hey sit down otherwise we generally say why don't you sit down so please sit down have a seat be seated these are some polite ways to offer a chair to offer a seat so students have you know they have a, a wide variety of expressions and forms and they have to pick one and that is what they are supposed to do that means they have to choose one so information gap then choice and then feedback suppose a speaker asks something and the listener doesn't get an opportunity to give feedback then it is not communication the listener must get a chance to give feedback the listener must get a chance to give his opinions then it is interactive and when it is interactive it is actually communication so always think of those tasks which make them uh, you know uh, talk for uh, let's say you know or which make them participate with involvement